Hello and welcome to Structured Change. Today we're going to take a look at ISO 55001 Section 4, but this time we're going to take a look at understanding the needs and expectations of stakeholders. Beyond the needs and expectations, of course, I would like to refer to as the wants of stakeholders. They're often the, the hidden shadows in the room that people don't often talk about, but it's important to understand that people, as humans, have wants. It could be um, intangible working conditions. It might be outcomes that leverage their own ability to further themselves personally. Understanding these is vital because drawing upon these and building them into the change journey creates a lot of pull as opposed to a lot of push or carrot versus stick. In the previous presentation, you would have seen understanding the context of the organization. Well, when the context is played equally next to the stakeholders um, or needs expectations of the stakeholders of an organization, you've got such a, if you like, pot of understanding of an organization that most people will never consider. Again, considering stakeholders as just individuals on a, if you like, a Reiki or a heat map is okay because it gives you a guiding um, or a navigation through the stakeholders. But to understand the true needs, expectations and wants of stakeholders enables you to really design your change journey for success and sustainability. So again, let's have a look at this next presentation and then you'll get an idea of how easy it is to play back this to your sponsors, but also too, in a timely and respectful manner, you can actually play this back to other stakeholder groups as your change journey progresses. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's just take a look at understanding the needs and expectations of stakeholders. I'll also add into this equation the wants of stakeholders as well because it's equally important to understand that humans will have preference and depending on your level of management or what function you're working in, being mindful of the wants is equally as important as understanding the needs because it will influence behaviour, beliefs and values in your organisation. So under section 4.2, um, we can see here that the stakeholders, we're interested in the stakeholders that are relevant to the asset management system, the requirements and expectations of these stakeholders, and also too the criteria for asset management decision making, very important. But the stakeholder requirements for recording financial and non-financial information relevant to asset management, etc., and for both internal and external. So it's a pretty dry read, isn't it? So let's just take a look at how I articulate this back to sponsors when we enter into a change process. After interviewing an organisation, it can be sometimes as easy as one day's worth of work, you actually come up and you, you can kind of understand the different tensions that exist within an organisation. If you look here, um, the needs and expectations of stakeholders you actually get an idea is, as to what is internal and what is external. For instance, the supply chain want accurate specifications, internal. Three unions with three different agendas. I'll say it's internal, although unions are external, but the, the output of that discussion would be internal. Older workforce want redundancy, internal. The young, younger workforce actually want longevity in their roles, internal. Maintenance wants a contract extension. In this case, that's external because they are an external supplier. Who wants to, owner wants to insource maintenance. So again, that's an external concern. Local community relies on the site, that's external. Reliability, want to perform reliability. Um, in this case, they were asked to do many different things and reliability was one of the, the minor things, which is very interesting. The parent company runs all businesses run the same way. Well, that's an external factor. Not sure who the asset manager is. Well, that's an internal one and one with a lot of leadership. The owner wants profit. Well, that's an external bearing factor. The operator wants availability and maintenance wants a budget internal. So in this quick lap, you can see very quickly that there's a balance here between both the internal and the external stakeholders, what they're actually seeking. And this wasn't pre-rehearsed. This, is, again, was after probably three different interviews in the business, and I was able to articulate it back in this one slide. So 
What does this do in a change management tool, you ask? Well, you are reminded that stakeholders are both external and internal. Quite often, change managers, change leadership, we tend to be drawn into only be considering the internal stakeholders of an organisation. Understanding the external ones are equally important. The asset management system could be anything, and it's very important to understand that a lot of the assignments that we're on are actually the contract is the basis or the epicentre of the asset management system itself. Also, understand the motives and drivers beyond what is visible. If you sense it, then it's most likely true. So go by gut, because as we go through organisations, we find that it's the wants of stakeholders and what isn't visible or explicit that is actually the driving forces in many organisations. Link the motives to stakeholder groups and understand how to engage and how to mix or match them when they do engage. For instance, if I'm trying to get a decision made around maintenance to change a particular behaviour, I'll be mindful of who I invite because I'm trying to influence them to see somebody else's point of view. So I probably wouldn't bring finance in to talk about cost. I'd probably bring operations in because the more output we can create through operations, the lower the unit cost is of maintenance, so everyone's a winner. That's an example of combining stakeholders. The effort will earn respect by stakeholders and provide minority groups with a voice, sometimes at the right time and the right place. So by going back to that diagram, it could have just been the younger workforce wanting longevity. Well, there is a key heartstring there that you can play back to the older generation who are really wanting just, I won't say sabotage, but aren't interested in bettering the organisation. Well, there's a key minority group with a voice that you can factor into the conversation and use that as a lever for change. So again, this video is just a quick look at the, in section four of ISA 55001, which was to understand stakeholders. It doesn't have to be a long-winded exercise. It just has to land on a page or two. And from that, you actually have got a compass for how to navigate your change journey. Thank you.